Sustainability is the theme I'm supposed to be thinking about, and frankly, this project with borders and globalization has um, meant that I've had to do an awful lot of thinking, not least because as soon as you start to think about sustainability in a global context, um, one gets into all sorts of fascinating debates about um, when we might understand um, a global impact of humanity to begin, um, and this particular one suggests that actually um, we are not here under a couple of kilometers of ice, um, or at least um, in circumstances of glaciation, precisely because um, the argument goes uh, 7,000 years ago, humanity invented agriculture, and as a consequence, um, averted uh, the return of glacial period um, in Earth's history. So we may, in fact, have been changing the climate for about 7,000 years. Conventionally, globalization suggests something slightly more recent, and the standard diagrams of the period of the Great Acceleration, I know you don't need to read all those, uh, those, those headings. Um, it includes transportation, it includes tropical forest loss, it includes large dams um, and numerous other um, items. The trajectory of each and every one of these graphs is approximately similar, and that's the period of the Great Acceleration of human activity, uh, which coincides with what most of us would understand to be the period of globalization. Um, the particular transformation of the planet that gets the most attention these days um, is, of course, climate, um, and it's becoming an increasingly politicized form of science, which is why the placard, of course, has footnotes. Um, the issue for sustainability, of course, is whether, in fact, 0.5 um, is in fact accurate or not. And the real question about what kind of a planet we are making, and I do put it in those terms, um, because that is effectively what is going on, um, is up for grabs. And question, uh, point number five on that climate science uh, 101 is of course crucial. To look at this intelligently, we need to look at international trade patterns. Obviously, we need to understand, however, that uh, what it is that is driving most of climate change our greenhouse gas emissions, and yes, um, the problem is us. Um, the Canadians, the Americans, and the Australians on a per capita basis, this is one diagram, they all come out slightly differently depending on how you do the math, but the overall pattern is very clear um, that in terms of global sustainability, um, what matters uh, is uh, the emissions on our per capita basis um, North Americans, along with our Australian friends, um, are the worst offenders. It's coming <coughs> home to roost, as it were, because to a very substantial extent, um, while we think about typhoons, we think about tropical storms, we think about hurricanes, depending on which part of the world we want to look at, in terms of um, the hazards that climate change is already presenting, um, in terms of being in California, of course, in some ways, um, it is more obviously a question of the dangers of fire. I like to quip in very bad taste um, that wildfire recently destroyed paradise, the town in California, that is. And thinking in terms of how it is that sustainability is being um, challenged, of course, the crucial dimension to all this is fire, because it's combustion products that are greenhouse gas um, emissions. And as we increasingly are vulnerable to uh, the effects of wildfire in numerous places, um, not just California, um, and this is of course the origin of the Economist's cover a little while ago, suggesting that fire um, is an increasing hazard and it's part of the losing war against, climatic, um, uh, against, against climate change. Um, are military metaphors appropriate? Well, given the state of emergency that in municipalities in many parts of the world are increasingly declaring, uh, perhaps they are. Um, nonetheless, um, the crucial point about this um, is that we need to stop and think about how it is that firepower um, is changing the world. And it's here that you can get the links between security, economy, uh, and sustainability very, very clearly. The discussion um, increasingly invokes the notion of the Anthropocene to emphasize the fact that on a geological scale, the transformations of planet Earth that are underway are on the equivalent scale of the major geological um, transitions of the past. Um, think the end of the dinosaurs and the emergence of mammals. 
um, the events of the Crescent are on that kind of scale and they are caused by the human use of fire in all its numerous manifestations. Because of course what is new about present circumstances is that one crazy species has learned the trick of ignition. Humans are the only species that has learned to do ignition and the consequences of our abilities to use fire um, and control it sometimes, um, but crucially not all the time, is at the heart of this extraordinary transformation. And globalization, the rapid expansion of the global economy, the rapid expansion of the connections between different parts of the globe, um, is driven, pun intended, um, by um, the use of uh, fossil fuels, which of course turn um, in numerous different ways, heat energy into kinetic energy to allow us to accomplish all sorts of things. We are, if you are to believe some of the recent discussions of the um, politics of the Anthropocene on what um, Dreisick and, and Pickering call a pathological path dependency, we are depending on enormous quantities of combustion to keep the uh, a global economy moving quite literally and it is of course precisely the movements across the frontiers which is the guts of what we call globalization. But we've reached a situation where the borders that may not may be most important are not necessarily national borders at all. Increasingly the discussion is uh, focusing on what is sometimes called the safe operating space for humanity. In other words, how large an ecological footprint can we have within the biosphere um, and still maintain something that looks approximately like um, the stable, relatively stable conditions that have made human civilization possible. Can we do that um, with some sense of ecological justice, some sense of social justice, has become the really big policy question um, for those of us who are struggling to think about this. Kate Rowart's donut economics diagram is increasingly um, uh, getting uh, traction as a way of trying to encapsulate a safe operating space. Yes, it's not a border, it's not technically a territory, but nonetheless the metaphors are powerfully suggestive. Um, can we keep the economy within the ecological ceiling, but yet ensure that we have a basic social foundation? Can we convert globalization from one that is excessively focused on extraction um, to one that it thinks about justice and redistribution a little more. Can we do it all without burning up huge quantities of stuff? Can we think about um, some of the borders that are not usually considered as part of globalization uh, much more explicitly? This was North Dakota a couple of years ago. And of course the question is sacred lands, the territory of native peoples, or Turtle Island, or whatever you wish to call it. Um, protecting their territory from uh, pipeline uh, construction, leading to these extraordinary scenes of um, huge protest camps with veterans from the Middle East um, arriving to help with the logistics to keep the protest camps actually running, saying we can't go on doing it this way anymore. Maybe it is time indeed to go solar. If the world moves quickly to the solar transition, and yes, electric vehicles and lots of other new technologies are coming more quickly than uh, is often widely recognized. The crucial question is whether they are actually coming quickly enough to ensure that we don't completely destabilize what is left of the existing climate um, system. Can we build a new world, as the International Renewable Energy um, Network is suggesting, and I do suggest Googling um, that, um, not least because the map is particularly interesting for anybody who wishes to think seriously about globalization, um, because it is focusing on Asia um, and Africa and a bit of Europe, um, and the North Americans that are causing the problem burning up so much stuff aren't in the picture at all. Um, the future, the argument suggests, in, or implies at least, um, is Asian, because of course China is getting particularly serious in building um, electrical vehicles and electrical technology. Hey, I nearly made it. <laughs> the future of globalization, oh dear, this is, yes. shut up. <laughs> um, the future of globalization um, may well lie here with a new electrical um, sy system of communications um, and so on. Uh, therefore, um, we have shifted the geography of globalization quite dramatically if this, in fact, is what transpires. 
Thank you.